Hi everyone, I'm Javier. And I'm Karen. And, and we, we are the, the Gov Geeks. Welcome to today's issue of Gov Geeks Assemble. Level up your nine to five on ninety-five, where we'll be discussing how not to be a stormtrooper when it comes to your resume. Only when it comes to your resume, though. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a couple of the challenges that they experience. One of the biggest ones is that they submit countless applications, they submit tons of times, different positions, and unfortunately, they're not able to get through to the interview process. They are either uh, not deemed qualified to move forward for consideration, or unfortunately, they just never really get heard from. Right, which they know that they're qualified, they've read the description, they know they can do that position, so they're confused with why they're just not getting through the process. Right, and we certainly can understand uh, the confusion, especially when you have in your mind that you are going to have a crafted, crafted the best resume possible, you're shooting it out to as many uh, application availabilities as possible, so something should hit. We can understand the frustration there. Right, which it's kind of like with a stormtrooper. Where you see that they're shooting their blast there, they're constantly trying to hit the mark, but they're just not making that target. Just not able to hit it. Well, we're going to help you stay on target and get your career moving in the right direction. So how can we do that? That's a very good question, Karen. So we've identified the issue that people are having. Let's look at some of the causes that happen with this. So as we've experienced talking with some of our clients and our colleagues, one of the issues is that they send out the application to a number of areas, but they are not formatting it correctly. And now there's a couple of things that you can do with the formatting. Karen, what's, the, what's one of the first ones? So first off, you can look at OPM's handbook, which will provide a link. So OPM is the Office of Personnel Management, where it has a listing of all the job series within the federal government. So from here, you can look at those specific series, for example, MAPA 0343, which has exactly what that specific job series entails, including specific responsibilities. So from there, you can tie your resume and your experience back to those specific duties and responsibilities as it pertains to that job series. And what's a MAPA again, Karen? MAPA is a Management and Program Analyst. Right. And the job series for that one? 0343. 0343 for Management and Program Analyst. So that's something that you can find within the OPM handbook. And again, we'll, we'll have that link available for you. What's another thing? So another thing is the job posting itself. So as you're reviewing the posting, you want to take note of the key duties and responsibilities. Here you will see the specific roles and responsibilities that that hiring manager is looking to fill. So from there you want to make sure that you again tie those specific responsibilities back to your resume. Exactly. When what you're doing is you are using the buzzwords that are there, or as we like to call it in government, buzzword, buzzword bingo. bingo. <laughs> The computer systems and the HR review specialists and the hiring managers are looking for keywords and key descriptions that demonstrate that you know what you're going to be doing and that you are qualified for the position. So using these words, connect directly with them and their understanding. It's kind of like when we're trying to listen to what R2-D2 was saying. character seems to know and understand what he's talking about, but as an audience member, we just hear the really clue, cool uh, beep up beep up. Did I do that voice right? Um, not quite, but close. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> so you want to be able to communicate with the systems um, appropriately in order to, to move everything forward. Exactly. So it's kind of like the secret passwords and passcodes to get in. But if you think about it, this totally makes sense because there are just so many applications that go through for any one open announcement. Uh, Karen, I know we were talking earlier, there was something where you got referred maybe 200 different applications, and those are 200 that have already passed the HR screening process, right? Right, so they've passed the computer process, they've passed the HR review, and now it's sitting with me to review. That's so that's 200 right. to go through. 
which I, of course, make sure I make the time to read those and go through them because all of you work hard to put your souls onto paper as far as your experience and your abilities. So I want to make sure that they get read since they've already made it past um, so many multiple levels. Exactly. And, and this is us as our experience as public servants, as hiring managers, not in our official capacity with the GovGeeks, but we're just talking from where we've been, what we've seen, what we've experienced. And, and really, this is a really big deal because if you think about how much limited time an individual has to review 200 applications, the hiring manager needs to know upfront that the people that they're selecting are the right ones. So it's your responsibility to make your application, your resume, all of your materials as clear and easy to read as follow uh, as possible to, to help them help you. Similarly, you should also do the same thing when it comes to the hiring manager because they have to pour through all of these applications as well. And if you think about it, if there's a couple hundred or a couple of thousand different applications for one position, and on top of that, they have tons of other positions to go through, really, how much time do they have available to be able to go through all of that? Right, in addition to everything else that they're having to do, not just read through resumes. Exactly, yes, uh, they, they have a lot of other things that are going on in HR. HR is one of the busiest areas within government, uh, I'll say that for sure. <laughs> so, there, so there's a lot happening. All right, Karen, so we talked about the importance of making sure that the content itself is awesome. We talked about uh, the key descriptions. We also talked about OPM. But I know that there's uh, another thing that should be important as well, and we were talking about formatting just a little while ago. Right, so in addition to formatting to tailor it to the job series or the key duties, just general formatting itself is crucial because there's nothing like putting in your resume and making sure it's in this beautiful format with bullets and tables and graphs or whatever you're putting in it. But if it's too overly formatted and not simple, it will get knocked out by the system. So you could be using the keywords, you could be tying it perfectly to the responsibilities and the job series description. But if it's not in the right format, if you have wingdings or whatever different type of font that you're using, Klingon, I don't know, whatever you're using, and it's just not making it through, it could be because the format itself is jamming up the system and it's just going to knock it out. Yeah. The system's not going to go, oh, wait a minute, let me convert this into a legible format right. so I can get it through to the hiring manager. Or the this is what I think that. you said. Right. The system is merely a computer. So think of it as far as, I hate mixing genres, but Winter Soldier, when they're trying to unlock the Winter Soldier, they have to use those specific words in a specific order in order to unlock the Winter Soldier. Razviet. So think of it in that form. It doesn't understand the formatting, you know, what, what language, anything like that. It just knows I need to see this specific word, freight train. I need to see this specific word in this order, homecoming. Right? So you want to make sure that you have that in the right order, in the right format, with the right keywords, so that you can get through that first part of the process. Exactly. But how cool is it once you have the Winter Soldier unlocked? Mission report. December 16, 1991. I mean, the guy's awesome, right? Yeah. James Buchanan Barnes reporting for duty. <laughs> So using these methods allows you to be able to move forward uh, in the process. And hopefully we're describing these details well enough so it, it makes a little bit more sense. We know that you have gotten tons of advice already on your resume. Odds are you have multiple versions of the resume yourself, but it's not like there's any one specific format that someone at some point had said, your resume has to look only like this. And even if they did, I'm sure there were five or six other people that said your resume should look exactly like this. Uh, another tip, and this one's, a, I think, a bit of a bonus tip to make sure that you're doing the formatting correctly, is to use the uh, OPMs or the USA Jobs Resume Builder. So this system allows you to input your information and then output a resume format. 
So you could print it out as a PDF or you could submit it electronically. Now, I admit, the way it looks when it comes out doesn't look very fancy, very elaborate, it doesn't have a lot of pop or pizzazz, but I tell you certainly what it does have is it has the ability to go through the system because it is being entered in through the system. Exactly, that's a good point. So to wrap up, we discussed three key solutions to not having a resume like a stormtrooper. Those were making sure that you check out OPM's handbook to identify the job series that you're going for to see the key responsibilities tied to that specific job series. Second, we talked about actually using the job posting to identify the hiring manager's key duties for the position that you're applying for and tying that back to your resume, making sure to use those key responsibilities and duties in your resume. And finally, we also talked about the formatting itself. So making sure that you're using the right format, using the right font, making sure that you're not trying to do too, anything too crazy in formatting um, that will cause the system to just not accept it. Um, and as a bonus, in order to help with that, you can use the USA Jobs Resume Builder. Which is totally free too. Absolutely. Bonus! That's nice. Okay, well that's good. So, uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope it really helped you aim a little bit better so you're not using a Stormtrooper's resume. Stay on target. Stay on target. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe and follow us here on YouTube, please click the button below. Also, please be sure to click that little bell so you'll get notified as soon as one of our videos is launched. We're very excited about that. We're also on social media, so please feel free to follow us there. On Instagram, we are at the GovGeeks, and on Twitter, we are also at the GovGeeks, but you can follow us individually uh, as well on Instagram. So, I am at Geek in Chief. And I am at the Chic GovGeek. Excellent, yes. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Geek on! Geek on. Good to go? <laughs> as far as I know.